Okay, I'm gonna start us. We like rewarding people who come on time. So welcome. Um, this is a public forum on the potential future reuse of 33 King Street, the probate court building. Um, we're gonna give you some background on the property, um, talk about options we're looking at, talk about the process, and then have lots of time for, for all your comments and questions. Um, and so I wanna start with um, having the mayor welcome everybody and introduce you. So mayor, it's all yours. Excellent. Hello, everyone. Um, welcome. Thank you so much for joining us to discuss this property. Um, I'm Mayor Gina Louis Shara. Um, so a little bit of background. The city has been working with the Commonwealth to facilitate revitalization of 33 King Street, um, that parcel for quite a few years, um, ever since the probate and register of deeds uh, vacated that building. So just to orient um, everyone, if, if anyone's not sure which parcel we're talking about, this is across from the Hotel Northampton and adjacent to the Calvin um, and to um, the building that was Silverscape Designs. Um, it is um, a, a great parcel. It has great potential to anchor the northeast block of King and Pleasant and Main, um, that intersection with, with some new exciting use. So as part of the central business core, it could generate expanded and some new uh, energy at that end of downtown and provide economic benefits to all of downtown, um, depending on what the ultimate uses are uh, designed for for the space. So um, it also has been highlighted as a key piece of the COVID recovery plan in the Northampton downtown rapid recovery plan, um, which was developed with the assistance of the Commonwealth. So market conditions are looking quite strong for attracting investors to the site, um, whether it be for commercial, residential, or for mixed uses. And last year, the city council authorized um, the former mayor to accept this land from the Commonwealth. So uh, the city is um, obligated to share the ultimate proceeds of the sale of this parcel with the Commonwealth. If the city were to decide to keep the property, the city would owe 100% of the state appraised value back to the Commonwealth, um, which would likely be um, multi-million dollars um, given uh, the, its location and sort of the importance of uh, its positioning downtown. So um, tonight we're really looking forward to hearing feedback from all of you on what um, you think is important for this parcel. And um, when, uh, you know, as we go forward and evaluate proposals for this, this redevelopment. So um, your, your feedback will be, um, incorporated and, and put into our mix while we're drafting the RFP um, for, for this property. And um, we are just really interested in hearing your thoughts on it. So I thank you all so much for joining us. Thank you, Mayor, that was great. Um, so uh, Karen, if you could put the slide deck up, that'd be great. So I'm gonna give you, so my name is Wayne Feiden, I'm Director of Planning and Sustainability for Northampton. Um, so I just wanna give you some more quick background on the process. Um, as the mayor said, you know, in theory, the city could buy the property, but not only do we pay, you know, 100% of appraised value, our experience with the Commonwealth is the appraisals are higher than what we typically think of as market value. We got a part, we got two parcels transferred to the city last year for no consideration the state hospital, but the original legislation said to come at appraised value. And even though the city dedicated for affordable housing, the appraisal for these very small parcels of land came in at $650,000. Um, and, and frankly, the city has other options for our own property. Tomorrow morning, we're drilling some wells behind City Hall in the parking lot that City Council declared surplus for affordable housing. So, you know, we might, instead of we sold this property, keep the revenue for other properties. So as the mayor said, the background was the city worked with the Department of Capital Asset um, Management and Maintenance, which is the city's landlord, um, under this new model. It used to be the city, the state, surplus their own property. Um, and that process often took years. So the new model they're beginning to work with, we were one of the first communities, is the lands come to the city, but the goal is for the city to sell it. The Commonwealth gets more or less 50% of the revenue. Um, we get 50% of the revenue, which you know is can be appropriated any way the city wants it to be. Um, and we're able to put restrictions on the property. So we can certainly put restrictions that might lower the value significantly just to make sure it's in the public interest out there. 
Um, and uh, so, uh, it, as the mayor said, city council gave the authority to the mayor to first accept a deed for the property um, and then transfer it out with the condition being that after the city drafts a request for proposals, after we draft the rules for the process, we have to go back to city council for their authority. Um, we had originally hoped to close on the property early this year. We need to do our basic due diligence before we do it. So everything we're talking about tonight is assuming the due diligence works out. We've done the basic environmental assessment either I think next week we'll be doing some drilling to make sure there were no gas leaks when there were gas tanks there so we don't want to own the property without that we'll be doing more environmental assessment inside the building um, so far this has all been going smoothly but that's that's what determines our time process um, so that's sort of the background and I'll leave it to Carolyn to take it from here great thank you Wayne uh, just some background information on the parcel before we open it up for discussion. This is, as the mayor uh, mentioned, this is in the uh, central business um, district core zone. We recently went through a process to create sort of sub categories in the central business district. And this parcel being sort of on the northern edge on King Street, sort of flanking the Hotel Northampton. Um, is a key component to that core um, historic um, block or blocks of Main Street and the um, uh, block south on Pleasant Street and then this um, half block or block on King Street. Um, so mixed uses are allowed, uh, commercial is allowed, residential is allowed behind um, a commercial use that fronts on the sidewalk. It's really important to have buildings that are fronting the street. That's sort of the main, that's a uh, um, primary characteristic um, of the design patterns of downtown and particularly the core district. So that's what the uh, zoning um, would require and sort of design and, and layout. They are any new building would be subject to the Central Business Architecture Committee review and planning board to ensure that the building and the site layout complies with those um, um, uh, form and, and design and layout stipulated in the zoning. Um, this is we now have this form based code, so it's very prescriptive about um, these types of um, character defining features of buildings and sites, but there is a 70 foot height allowance with zero setbacks. So there's lots of flexibility in both use and sort of location of building. The parcel is about an um, acre and a half. And currently uh, we, there is an easement. You see a blue line on the back of this parcel. The parcel is outlined in red here on the lower part of the screen. The blue line represents the bike path. And then the blue um, switch back there is of course the on and off ramp to the bike path. So we have currently an easement with the Commonwealth to allow bicycle and pedestrian access uh, through that portion of the property to Merrick Lane, which is um, the, uh, the right of way that comes out to King Street. So that's an important feature and uh, that needs to be uh, kept in mind because once the city uh, takes ownership of the property, those easements dissolve. And so we'd want to make sure that those are um, reestablished in any transfer out of the property that happens um, in the future. We also have about 88 parking spaces that are available to the public free at night. And so that's something else that um, we may want to consider um, in the disposition of the land. So what the, the map shows here is um, a little bit of the uh, broader context of the parcel. You see an orange here is the uh, parcel outline in the center of that um, first ring. The first blue ring around that represents a quarter mile distance. The second ring is a half a mile distance from this parcel. Um, in the sort of going from the outside in, uh, we have about 688 um, affordable housing units within a half mile of this um, parcel, which represents about 43% of the total units in the city. And as you get closer to the parcel, there's still uh, quite a few units, 290 units of affordable housing. This is designated affordable housing, subsidized affordable housing within a quarter mile of the site. 
Also within this quarter mile ring, the um, uh, mayor has pledged and public money, um, over two and a half million dollars of public money is pledged for further development of possible affordable housing sites. And um, also um, in uh, the resilience hub, um, and locating a space for that. So also sort of in the context of the relationship with this parcel. Market conditions, um, well, you all are probably familiar with the fact that there's a high demand for housing and particularly rental housing demand. We've seen different figures um, floating around about what that demand is. Um, we've had uh, interested parties um, suggesting that currently there's a demand for up to 600 units in Northampton alone. Um, our retail vacancies are slowly coming um, back or, or filling up. Um, but, so we feel like the, the market is turning around. We do feel like there is um, still quite a bit of surplus of office space or not, or the demand I should say is much less for office space now coming out of COVID. Um, and that affects sort of the return on the on the value or, or pricing of that office space. The location also is within a quarter of a mile of the train platform, which is um, a great position in which to be it sort of again speaks to that um, part of this pro property that so um, that makes it so desirable is that it's really right in the center of everything. Um, as well as being right on King Street where there are um, upwards of 17,000 automobile trips passing by this property um, daily. So that makes it a high value site. Um, so just going back, um, sorry, um, just going back to um, also sort of emphasizing that high value site is just important to keep in mind in terms of what that appraisal might come back um, from the Commonwealth in terms of wanting to get those proceeds uh, back to them, particularly if it becomes a um, city use. So next, I just want to talk a little bit about the minimum standards we've been thinking about that would go into the mix uh, um, when gathering data from uh, other um, interested parties and, and during the, through this public process. Um, we feel that it's really important in terms of meeting our um, sustainable Northampton goals that, that any new structure be fossil fuel free for heating and cooling. And of course, the building codes now require much more stringent um, energy performance standards and uh, require that buildings be solar ready. Um, we think that it's very important to renew that existing bicycle and pedestrian easement and the access from the bike path uh, that I mentioned previously. Um, we also have in terms of um, energy, you know, we could also think about pushing the envelope further and requiring um, ground source um, um, heat pump for energy. Um, but that's also something I think that's um, worthwhile discussing. It certainly hasn't, there's nothing set in stone by any means at this point. But again, um, we also want to think about non-city uses for this property. So we're not putting the city in a position of sort of paying a penalty back to the Commonwealth for keeping the city in public use or city specific use. So, you know, at this point, what we really want to gather from you all here, and there'll be other venues as well that will sort of be shopping this around as we develop their um, request for proposals. So we want to look at anything, everything from uses to energy efficiencies to access, job creation, um, what kind of evaluation criteria should be put into those, even if we say, okay, this type of use is the, is the most preferred use, how do we evaluate these, what uh, is it going to be based on the greatest return for the city in terms of short term sale and taxes. Are there other um, revenue sources that um, are should be weighted more heavily? Meals tax potential, hotel room tax potential. Um, closing our housing gap. We know we have this huge demand for um, rental and ownership units in the city. Um, how much weight should be put into permanent as well as short-term job creation? 
public parking options, um, either for nighttime or permanently, and those energy standards I, I mentioned briefly in the previous slide. And so I think, I mean, that's basically it for the short presentation before we open it up um, for, for discussion. And um, I think what the best thing is for me to probably stop sharing my screen so we can all see people who have uh, want to raise their hand. I have um, put on the feature um, for people to unmute themselves. So if you could raise your hand um, electronically, or we've got about 20 participants here. So probably the best thing would be to raise hands electronically so we can see you. But if you're having trouble with that, you know, waving in front of the screen um, would be sort of second best. And Wayne, if you could help me also see if there's anybody out there with raised hands, that would be great. Okay. All right, here they come. I First person I see is um, Garrett. You wanna introduce yourself and let us know what you're thinking? That'd be great. Garrett, disappear. Carolyn, do you have to unmute him so he can talk? Um, I put the allow unmute feature on, but maybe if he pops back on, we could go through to the next person I see is Roberta um, Pato. So I think you can unmute yourself if you wanna go ahead. You can't? Ah, that's weird. <laughs> I'm showing on my end that you can. So I will ask. I'm going to ask here, I'm clicking. It you. doesn't. It wasn't clicked on. It should work now. There you okay. go. Uh, Sorry about that. So, uh, do you want me to go? I just have a couple of quick. Sure. Very quick. That'd be great. Um, so, I'm, I'm just curious: is the assumption that the existing building, which I know has a very mixed reputation in terms of its aesthetics, um, is the assumption that it is probably going to that it's not feasible to redevelop it. Redevelop it. Um, I can start with the answer. I, we're open to either one. Um, as part of our due diligence, we're probably going to hire an architect to do sort of a study for it. Um, yep. It's not, unlike the churches, for example, in town, it's not historic. I don't think we mind if it comes down, but it's in pretty bad shape. Uh, you know, it was a parking garage. So I think we're personally assuming that, but that's not, I don't think that would be a requirement. Um, yeah, I, I, I was just thinking about embodied energy as a consideration in terms of, I didn't know it was a parking garage. The, the only other just quick comment is, um, I know housing is a really strong imperative these days, but that is really, as, as you designated, it's really part of the urban core and um, I think even beyond the zoning, it would be great to have it be some sort of active um, contribution towards the street life and commerce and activity in the city. Thanks. Hey, thank you, Garrett. Uh, Roberta, can you unmute yourself? There. Yeah, I just did. Um, I was really thinking that the city has no place for a LGBTQ center in town. And this is an ideal spot for something like that. Um, we could use it for not just meetings, of course there are many organizations that meet, in, really meet in people's houses instead of having an organized place to meet. We can use it for um, a bookstore possibly, or a, li a London library or films or events that we could have in workshops. Um, we could do mentoring which I think would be necessary to, for intergenerational uh, gay people. And um, I, th I think it would be important in town, especially given the makeup of our town. Um, there is no such place here. And many places have that, and many cities have something where people can meet and be together. That's right. just what I wanted to say. Okay, thank you. Appreciate that. Um, 
Is there anybody else with a raised hand? Um, Louis, see your hand waving there. I, I, I'm not, I think that um, this is going to be, there's going to be something really different in that spot. I, I tend to agree that the building, despite the fact that reuse is always uh, beneficial, it's an awfully, it's an awkward building. It fits in the, on the parcel poorly. It's, um, you know, eight foot thick concrete floors on and on and on. It would be really difficult to work with. Um, I wonder what you and Wayne think, and I also am thinking about Rich Matowitz and Mansoor, what they think about um, what could happen on the site um, in, a, in a pragmatic fashion. What's, what's your vision and what are, what's their visions? I, I certainly can't answer that, but I will say, you know, just to clarify one thing, the way Karen was saying things, I think we're assuming two things in RFP. Some might be minimum standards, for example, energy or bike path access or something different. And the other would just be a waiting system. We don't know what the market is going to give us. So it's, you know, it's not like in the end, we're going to say, here's what the use has to be here. It's going to be coming up with an evaluative criteria for to judge proposals. Um, thanks, Louis. Uh, Bob Reckman? I think we should welcome the idea of having that parcel used for residential purposes. Uh, and in the, we've, we've seen what happened on Pleasant Street with the lumber yard at, at Live 150. So, and I think if we had more people living downtown of whatever class they may be, that would be good for our city, would put more life downtown. So. I think a, a residential use would be most welcome in my book. Thanks, Bob. Um, uh, Gilad, go ahead. Sorry. Uh, yeah, yeah I. I I wanted to say that I, I agree with what was just said um, about residential uses. Um, I think it would be really interesting to explore if Valley CDC would potentially be interested in some sort of development there, possibly with SROs included, as well as uh, more high-end housing to sort of balance out um, you know, costs, um, as well as possibly some form of sort of mixed use um, with some business space as well, kind of how we can think about incorporating um, space, both business and residential space for multiple um, income brackets of, of folks in the city. Thank you. Anybody else? I, I don't see any other hands. Do you, Wayne? Or, no, sorry, Laura Baker. Hi everybody, um, I'm Laura Baker. I work at the Valley Community Development Corporation. I had a question. Um, I guess I'm interested what you consider to be municipal uses. For example, the resiliency hub, which could be potentially developed and owned by another entity other than the city using city support. Could something like that go in this location or be part of what goes in this location? It should be eligible as long as we're as long as it's not city owned. It wouldn't right. have the payback piece. If it was a new building, um, it would almost certainly be far more expensive than on existing piece of city property. It was a reuse building. There are a lot of challenges with with that building being used for it. So yes, eligible. Um, something that is fairly time sensitive. Yeah. Um, you know, we're trying to get that up soon. It yeah. may not be the ideal use. There could be other public uses that are less time sensitive. Okay, thanks. Um, I don't see any other hands at the moment. So Garrett, why don't you go around for number two? Okay, I'm not trying to be greedy. 
just figured there was a space. So as, as a follow on to Laura's comment, um, if, if, it is a, if it is privately owned and there's some sort of lease back to the city or to a nonprofit that's part of the RFP, um, I guess, is that feasible? Um, so that's one question. And then the other is, um, is the city is the city ownership versus private ownership thing um, wholesale for the entire property or can it be split up so you're paying the city is paying a partial um, payback to the to the state so um yes both are possible um so the the lease back just example and obviously a lot of people think it wasn't long enough but when the city surplus the DA Sullivan School and kept the um, arts there for 30 years, I think that kind of arrangement is certainly legal. Um, it would have to be uh, long enough that you would still attract a private sector person. So it would have to be, or it would have to be a small enough space you could do it. We could divide the property up. The former mayor explored doing that for parking. But so it's legal, but DCAM stressed how expensive it would be, and we didn't pursue it in the process. Um, in the process yeah. But but again, I mean, you know, Carolyn talked about the easement to the bike path, which we'd have to renew. We also currently have an easement for nighttime parking, so potentially there's some sort of again the same sort of shared use piece. If it was a use that didn't have residential, for example, so it didn't have an overnight parking need or didn't have a weekend parking need, you can imagine that sort of scenario. Any other comments from folks? Okay. Um, just leave it open for a minute. Um, oh, um, Ken Shapiro. Ken Shapiro, sure, go ahead. Hello. So, as you all probably know, East Heaven had a fire, and I'm currently searching for uh, a, a location to rebuild um, and expand our operation. Um, I don't know if I fit into this. <laughs> But I, I'm lurking in this conversation, just kind of trying to bring myself up to speed with what your needs are and how they could uh, coincide with my needs. I know that if I build a new East Heaven, it'll be a major boon to the community, just as the old East Heaven was. We served like a million and a quarter people over 40 years. And um, you know, most of our tickets were like 80 to $100 per person who came, um, at least recently, you know. Um, so there's a, there's a benefit to the community, to the downtown, to have a viable spa that draws from all over New England and the mid-Atlantic. Um, keep me in mind. That's about all I can say. If there's a way I can fit into this, if, if there's a way that you can fit me into this, um, I, I would be all ears and, uh, I'm looking for someplace all around town and that's, that's my hat in the ring. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Appreciate it. Um, I see Laura Baker. You want to go round again? Sure. Why, why would I leave without saying the city needs more affordable housing? And this is a big parcel it's actually almost the same size it's slightly bigger than the lumberyard parcel um, and so on that it's that parcel is an acre and a quarter we were able to put 55 units plus a number of commercial areas and i don't know i kind of see a mixed use of some sort um, would be great for this location it's certainly going to be attractive both for business commercial retail as well as for residential so um, but, but there's no doubt we can fill housing units if they're priced correctly, whereas the commercial spaces that we've built in our properties 
have been really challenging to fill. So it just, it, we always know we can fill housing. We don't always know we can fill um, commercial. Yep. Thank you. Yep. Thanks. Um, uh, Gilad, do you want to um, unmute? Yeah, thank you. Um, I've heard recently that uh, Hilltown Community Health Center is also interested in the possibility of being able to create a low-income health clinic uh, medical center in Northampton since there isn't one currently. Um, and I'm, I, I'm interested in what that might look like, maybe if it's even paired with uh, mixed use development with Valley CDC and creating some um, sort of central space with both affordable housing and health access um, downtown as well. And I, I, from what I understand, Hilltown Community Health Center um, could both fundraise and access um, FQHC dollars for build outs and renovations of either an old space or a new space. Um, so I think it might be interesting to explore some sort of partnership between health services and, and housing. Great, thanks. Um, George Cohouse. Hello everyone, George Cohouse from State Street. <clears throat> um, a, a couple of things, Carolyn, one quick question. I heard something about some kind of criteria where if it's not met, the city pays a penalty back to the Commonwealth. Could one of you rephrase that for me? Well, I, yes, I mean, I, it's not, it's only that then we would pay, we'd be required to pay full appraised value and that's back to the Commonwealth based on their appraisals. It's not based on what our city assessors say is the value of the property. It's what the Commonwealth sets down with their hand-picked appraisers to come down and say, okay, this property is prime real estate on a stretch of road that has 17,000 cars per day and therefore it's going to be X millions of dollars appraised value. So therefore city, you pay us that amount if you want to keep it for your own use. It, there's, also a, there's also a smaller penalty that I think we've ignored because it's not really important, but the, I've got the exact form in the legislation, but it's basically a 50-50 split between the money between the city and the Commonwealth with some incentives for the city if we move very quickly in selling it. Frankly, I think the incentives are small enough that we should move whatever pace we want to move at. And if we get extra money, great, but not enough, it, should, it shouldn't be driving the bus. Right? And also just to sort of follow up on that, given that sort of those parameters that were um, provided, given to us, um, um, we could, as Wayne had mentioned earlier in the presentation, use any proceeds of that sale even after the split of the proceeds of the Commonwealth to support other types of uses that are in high need for the city that might not be able to um, afford such a um, um, high value street front property. So, you know, nonprofit um, agencies that might be better suited for something that's on a side street instead of this sort of main front and center of property. So there is that benefit as well. And, and the mayor can correct me because she still knows the budget stuff better than I do, but it's my understanding that sale of sur surplus property just would be the mayor can allocate for any capital improvement, but not for any, oper for, not for any operations dollars. I believe that's right. Right, now my suggestion for the RFP or a recommendation perhaps, um, this morning we had a great celebration, it's bike month, we had a great celebration downtown Northampton, uh, between 60 and 80 people came between the hours of seven and nine. Just a small sample of the growth of bikes um, for recreational and transportation purposes. Within the next five years, the, uh, <clears throat> the trail network system from Northampton to New Haven will be completed, as will the trail section from Northampton to Boston. It's going to prompt a, a huge influx of tourists coming to Northampton much more. Already we see regionally and nationally 
how tourism is really um, bolstered by good rail trail systems. <clears throat> so I would suggest because of its location along the rail trail that perhaps we add a, a, some kind of, you know, cutting edge amenity for bicyclists, maybe a covered parking garage, maybe some kind of uh, repair station, uh, more advanced than what we see now on the rail trail, but something that's a real draw for all of these tourists that will be coming to town on their bicycles and staying perhaps overnight, certainly eating at the restaurants. If we think we see a lot of tourism by bikes now, um, in another five years, it's just gonna grow exponentially. So I think this is a great location to try to uh, build in some kind of feature like that. Thanks. Thanks, George. Um, okay, um, Garrett. So uh, I, I'm hearing a, a number of kind of public uh, good uses and also a, a compelling need to get money to pay for the property. And I'm, I'm kind of wondering, so what if the city buys the property, but with a, a package already in place for reselling part of it to a private developer. Um, so you would maintain some control over, maybe more control over what kinds of great amenities would go there without having to cover for a long, you know, for longer than the, the private buyout. Of, of a portion of it. Um, so you'd, you'd have to front the money, but you'd you know, have it coming in the, the back door from the private component of it. Just a thought. Great. Thanks. Um, <clears throat> okay. So we've gone around a couple times with a few people. Anybody else? Any last um, comments? I mean, I will sort of to reiterate the process. The I, the um, the next step is to um, sort of take um, these comments, um, complete the environmental assessment uh, to ensure that in fact um, it makes sense for the city to um, take. Um, this property off the Commonwealth's hands and then um, just um, issue an RFP. Um, so we'll we draft the RFP um, and then get um, council support for that before issuing the RFP and then issue that RFP, um, evaluate the projects, of course, based on that criteria, based on the sort of interests and the minimum criteria as well as an evaluative uh, criteria that we would put together and um, move forward in that way. So this is really just the beginning of that RFP process um, with um, more for you all to hear about in the future. Um, so I don't know if there are any other comments or if Wayne or uh, Mayor, you want to, you have um, um, have any sort of wrap up comments? No, I just, I'm thankful for everyone for coming and, and sharing those thoughts. And um, people should also feel free to email with um, other thoughts or ideas as well. Absolutely. Yep. Great. Yeah. Well, thank you all for coming. Really appreciate it. And um, uh, we'll um, keep everyone posted out how this proceeds. Thank you. Take care. Bye-bye.